Hi, AP Calc BC students, Mr. Record here, and we're going to take a look at our third example covering topic 9.3. We're kind of discussing the idea of the second derivative in parametric, but I wanted to just to take a bit of a, a detour and just discuss some more calculus things that we can do uh, with parametric equations. And we're going to revisit the idea of motion. I had mentioned that we're going to dive deeper and deeper into motion as we move through parametrics and then ultimately on into vectors, uh, which would be the middle part of Unit uh, 9 with topics 9.4, 9.5, and 9.6. So let's take a look at this example. It says that we're going to use a calculator, so um, I'm going to do predominantly things that uh, my students have seen before uh, with the calculator, but you're always welcome to follow along if you're um, uh, kind of fairly new to the TI Inspire and want to practice some of these concepts. You can certainly grab your TI Inspire and follow along with me. It says a particle is moving along a curve in the xy plane and it's at position x of t comma y of t at time t. We're given the fact that dx dt is the natural log of t plus 1, and dy over dt is the arc sine of e to the negative t squared power. And t is defined to be 0 and bigger. At time 1, the particle is at position 2, 5. It's a very common stem that you might see on the calculator-assisted velocity acceleration position particle motion problem on the BC exam. The part A pretty straightforward find the slope of the tangent line to the curve at position 2 5. So if we think about the slope of the tangent line well we've been dealing with that especially in topic 9.1 where this is just looking for the value of dy over dx and again we want to find that you know very specifically at the point 2, 5, which in turn is equivalent to at time 1. And that's a great thing. We don't have to worry about finding the t value given that point. They've given both of it to us. Now, in this particular problem, what that essentially means is that we're going to take the dy over dt value, divide it by the dx over dt value, both of which are given to us, and we're going to evaluate those at 1. Now, there's a lot of different ways that this can be set up in a graphing calculator. I'm going to show you what is my favorite way. All right, so here we go. I'm all set up. I'm using a calculator scratch pad on my TI Inspire CX2. This particular problem, we're going to compute um, basically a numeric derivative, a numeric value more so. And so this can be done on a non-CAS or a numeric Inspire. And of course, uh, everything that you're going to see with this problem, both parts A and B work really nicely on the TI-84 as well. Now, because this is a free response question, you know, there's the chance that these derivative values, the dx dt and the dy dt that you see on your paper, could be used over and over again. And so I'm going to go ahead and define those. But I'm really reluctant to define the dx dt as, say, something like this. That, that kind of bothers me. Because x of t to me sounds more like it would be the position of the the x position of this particular particle, not the, the derivative of that particular position. So I might be a little bit more descriptive, and it might take a, two, a, a few extra keystrokes, but you could type x der or x prime, let's say, x prime. And I'll still use the default. You have to have some kind of an independent variable, so I'll go of t. And then remember, you always use the control math template button to get your colon equal. And then we can type in what that expression was, which is control e to the x to get your ln, and then t plus 1. Once you hit enter, seeing the word done means it's been stored into the calculator. We're going to do the same thing with y. How about y prime of t? Control math template, colon equal. And then for arc sine, we'll go to our trig menu choose the inverse sign, and we're going with e 
raised to the negative t squared power. Boy, a lot going on with that particular function. And boom, it's stored. Now, when we're asked to compute the slope of the tangent line to the original curve, what that means is we're just going to take the, the dy dx into consideration for that slope, which we know in turn is the dy dt over the dx dt. So we just simply have to build a fraction just like that, and we just simply input the y prime value, and we can just go ahead and call that of t divided by the x prime value at t, and then we can put our such that symbol after the fact. And the t value in this case, as we said, is t equal 1. Now, a couple of things. If I hit enter right now, I'm going to get the exact value. And, you know, maybe I didn't want that exact value. Maybe I do want a decimal. So I could have just chose to put a decimal after the answer in the first place. And boom, it gives us that decimal value that we're likely going to look for. So that's going to be the answer to our part A. Let's return back to the document. And we're just going to say that we have our value, and I'll use approximately equal to because I am going to have to round this value, and I'll just truncate it at 0.543. And so that would take care of our first part. That's the slope of the tangent line drawn to that curve. Now if we take a look at the second part, it says find the x-coordinate of the position of the particle at time t equal to 3. So in this particular instance, we're looking to find the x-coordinate, which in this particular problem is one and the same with the x of t value. Right? If we're thinking parametric equations, the x equation tells you what the x coordinate is. The y equation tells you what the y coordinate is. Very intuitive. But the problem is we're not given the x of t. We're given its derivative. And so it seems like it would be fairly intuitive that we would integrate dx dt, or in this case, integrate the natural log of t plus 1. But if you're using a graphing calculator that let's say doesn't have cast capabilities this may be very uh, impossible to do in fact even if you have cast capabilities not all indefinite integrals can be uh, solved by a, a cast machine so we're going to go ahead and attack this the way that all graphing calculators would attack this successfully and we're going to use boundaries of integration now it probably seems clear that 3 would serve as one of those boundaries because it's involved in the question. Be very nice if you knew some other information about this position at another time. And slowly but surely we move up to the top and we see that time is also mentioned there. And so using 1 and 3 seem fairly uh, straightforward, I think. Now, before I go to the calculator, I want us to think about what will this actually compute symbolically. You're about ready to integrate the derivative of x. Integrate, derivative, sort of cancel each other out, and you're left with x position. Now you apply your boundaries. The upper bound goes first. We subtract. The lower bound goes next. And now what you're dealing with here is an equation that consists of three parts. If you want to find the x-coordinate at time 3, what I've underlined is what you're trying to discover. That means these other two pieces you need to know. Well, the x of 1 is something that we do indeed know. It says up here at the top at time 1, the particle is at position 2, 5. So we want to use the 2 value for x1. Make sure you use the 2. We're looking at the x position there. And then the left side is going to be solved by using the graphing calculator. Let's take another look at the graphing calculator. So I'm just picking up right where I left off the previous graphing, or, or uh, sorry, calculator scratch pad screen. And so I need to pull up uh, a definite integral template. The TI Inspire will do that with Shift Plus. Math 9 is what you probably would use off, off the TI 84. Let's put our boundaries in. And then we need to put in our function that we're going to integrate. Well, there's a lot of different ways that you can do this. Um, 
I suppose we could type in our x prime of t. Um, I got a feeling that that probably takes just as many keystrokes as typing in the natural log of t plus 1. But hey, I've got it stored. Why not? Let's go ahead and do it. See if it works. So x prime, there we go, of t. And then we're going to integrate that with respect to t. And our output is? Oh, it's an exact value. Okay, well, again, if we wanted to change that to a, an estimate, we could do a couple of different things. I could go back into the original and say I could put a decimal point after the 1 or the 3, or I could just very quickly hit Control-Enter, and there is going to be a decimal approximation. And, you know, both of those are good answers. It's likely that the problems that you see on the AP exam are most likely even more hideous than what you see with this equation so that virtually all calculators can only hope to uh, calculate them as a decimal format. So I have both of these in mind so we'll go ahead and go back to the document and finish up. Okay so on the home stretch now if you remember before as a decimal we had 2.158 Eight, I'll go ahead and take this to four decimal places. So to get the x of 3 by itself, I merely need to add 2 over, and I have 4.1588 for my answer. Now, if we had used the exact value, uh, we could have gotten an answer that's a little bit more exact. But as I said before, it's not likely that this is going to be the situation that you're faced with. But in this particular instance, adding 2 over is essentially going to um, cancel out the 2s that are there, and we end up with 6 natural log of 2. And I suppose for that matter, maybe it would have been best for these two equal signs to have been approximately. Again, we're not going to take points off for that, but that is definitely the case since we are rounding. So what's happening with this problem? Well, we know a little bit about the rate of change of the x position. We also know where this particle is at a certain time. That's enough information to figure out where the particle is going to be at another time later on, x uh, t equal 3 in this case. Hopefully this helps. This kind of wraps up this very short lesson uh, dealing with topic 9.2. Uh, two, and mostly the second derivative, but a little bit of other calculus I just sprinkled in here as well. Moving on to the uh, future set of videos that accompany 9.3, we're going to be talking about arc lengths and uh, do a little bit of surface area of revolution, which not is not tested on the BC exam, but we'll focus a little bit more with arc lengths, which also can mean distance traveled around a parametric equation. So be sure to check those out. Thanks for joining.